Why Icons Curve The Mystery of Curved Icons Visitors touring the museum's galleries are often struck by the fact that many icons, like this large 17th century icon of St. Alexis, the Man of God, are curved, like the 3rd century Roman scutum, a shield, excavated by Yale archaeologists from the ancient city of Dura Europos in modern Syria. They invariably wonder if the bending is intentional, done for some subtle artistic or theological reason by the iconographer in the process of preparing the board for painting. In fact, all icons start out as flat. All icons are painted on flat boards, but they often tend to bow with time, owing to the natural tendency of boards to warp or cup as they dry, as you may have observed for the floorboards on a deck or porch. Most boards, unless they are cut from the center of the tree, have a cross-section with an unsymmetrical pattern of growth rings that curve toward the center of the tree and away from the bark face. As the boards dry, the side on the bark face will shrink more than the side that faced the heartwood, causing the center of the board to bend away from the bark face. Since icon boards are typically positioned with their bark sides toward the back of the icon and the heartwood side toward the front or painted side, they therefore tend to bow outward, giving the icon its characteristic convex or barrel-like appearance. Can we keep icons from bending? To prevent, or at least to minimize the bowing, the iconographer chisels grooves in the back of the icon across the grain, and then drives hardwood cross pieces, called in Russian shpanki, into the grooves. If you look closely at the edges of our icons, you can usually see either the cross pieces or the grooves where they originally were. Even with the spunky in place, though, icons can still warp, pulling away from the cross pieces, as in this cross-sectional view of an icon. Small versus large icons. This technique works well for small icons, which can be painted on a single board and do not bend very much. However, large icons are much too wide for a single board and require two or more boards to be glued together, as they are in the top of your dining room table. If you look closely at a large icon, you can usually find the line where the boards have been joined. Because of their greater width, the bending of large icons is much more pronounced. While a large icon can still most often curve as if it were a single board, in some cases the boards will warp separately as in this icon of the presentation of Christ in the temple in 1550. Although it may be difficult to see from this photo, the shadows below the icon clearly show the separate cupping of its two boards. The bottom line and a challenge. So then, there really is no mystery about curved icons. The explanation for their curvature is not a matter of some subtle point related to art or theology, but is just a simple matter of science and moisture. Now, armed with this information, why not take some time to look around to see how many other curved icons you can find hanging in our galleries? Finally, here's a challenge for you. There is a large icon of St. Nicholas that is even more oddly warped than what we have been discussing here. Go and take a look at it and think like an art detective. How do you suppose it might have warped that way?